All right, so this is my review on the uh, Chicago Electric 68316 uh, double cut saw. Uh, you've probably seen infomercials on this in the last year uh, before it became a, a Harbor Freight item. And it's reasonably well built. Uh, I've been using it to uh, cut this metal for a trailer project, but I've run into a few things that I think people should probably be aware of. Uh, I'll go over here to a lower noise area and uh, explain some of this. Uh, the way these saws work, and you can probably see that in a lot of other people's videos, is there's actually two blades. One rotates one direction, the other rotates the other direction. And that way, at any given time, what you have is basically a scissors action between carbide blades that work in a circle. And so think of it as a high-speed miniature carbide shear. And it's a 7.5 amp motor, which is relatively powerful as far as small handheld power tools go. Uh, there is no cordless version because you're kind of pushing it to get 7.5 amp equivalent out of a battery. Okay, so this is not likely to be a cordless one anytime soon. If they do come up with a cordless version of this, expect to see a smaller blade or maybe something that would only use a 20 or, or 36 volt or 40 volt batteries. The, uh, the carbide on this though, what I've run into in cutting metal and all the advertisements show guys cutting rebar with it. Uh, one, when it says anti-kickback, it's not exactly true. You have to be hitting the metal at a perfectly dead on straight angle. If you tilt to one side or the other, one or the other blade will grab and then start kicking. So it may kick forward or kick back depending on how you're holding it and how it's leaning. The other thing I'm finding is that I lost, in cutting the metal, I lost a couple of carbide teeth, which means they came off of this. So blade wear is an issue. Well, you might run into jobs where, you know, blade wear is just part of the cost of doing a job because other types of equipment that will do that level of cutting is much less portable, maybe a little harder to handle in that space, or it won't cut with the precision that this cuts with. And I would say that it gives you more precision than you'll get with a Sawzall. The other thing is it can do a type of plunge cutting, which you can't really do very well with other types of saws. But I've, I had some of those uh, carbide teeth flying off, and the other thing in order to do straight down cuts, you got to like, you know, hold the blade guard back with one hand and that can be a little bit awkward. But what happened was I had one hand up here as I'm cutting and, and you know, however this happened, I had little bits of metal flying at me and it really stung. Uh, there's no blood, but it, it hurt. Uh, the other thing you might want to run into with, you know, you got to assemble the little hand guard here. And it looks like there could be a couple different ways you could do it, like let's say with a handle sticking over in this side or, or something like that, don't. Just, just put it on in a factory position. The way the switch works is kind of a safety switch where if you let it go or you lose your grip on it, it, it automatically turns off. The other thing is you can't turn it on by just pressing it forward. You have to like press it past the notch. It's like one of those little child-proof type things. That can get irritating too, and I see in the future, you're going to see some hotshot contractor type guys who will probably modify the switch and I'll probably remove and throw away that blade guard. Um, if you're working alone and you do that and you take responsibility for your own adult actions, that's you. Uh, personally, I wouldn't do it. And, you know, if you do that and then put employees up to a situation like that, that's, that's kind of a dangerous thing. And uh, the other thing I noticed on this, it wasn't any of the infomercial stuff, is comes with a bunch of these little tubes that says they're for lubricant um, and you kind of feed them down and, and it lubricates the blade. What I'm doing on this is I'm using uh, bar and chain oil for this sort of a thing. It's, it's, um, you know, it's like motor oil but it's made for bar and chain lube on chainsaws which has a little bit more of a paraffin content in it than normal motor oil and the paraffin content will stick to the metal more and last a little longer on that and uh, and so it's a little bit of a sticky metal the reason you don't use that stuff in engines is because it actually promotes uh, 
dunk build up in the rings which you know you don't want to use bar and chain lube in an engine and you could use motor oil to lubricate this stuff it just if you use a bar and chain lube it lasts a little bit longer before it kind of rubs off uh, from the heat and all that kind of stuff the other thing is you want to make sure you lube this up pretty well before storing it um, because of the way the blades work and they turn against each other it's possible for that finish to have come off the blades on the inside and then start rusting those together while it's sitting in let's say a damp environment but there it is the uh, the Harbor Freight uh, Chicago double cut saw with the counter rotating blades you can see other information on the, online uh, I'm gonna give this four stars out of five and I'm gonna say that it's not a, a highly recommended tool unless you're gonna do some specialized cutting and other stuff won't work for that purpose but you know it's another tool for the inventory in the uh, mobile workshop